Welcome back to Terror by the Bay. I'm David. Okay, let's take a run to the border, shall we? Um, uh, news broke this evening that the National Border Patrol Council, which represents more than 18,000 agents, uh, are supporting the bipartisan Senate draft uh, legislation addressing issues at the border. Uh, of note is that this group uh, has endorsed Donald Trump as late as night as 2020, and they have railed on Biden on Biden's uh, border policy. And so McConnell is out there, uh, basically telling uh, Republicans that they should carefully consider this bill. Uh, Moses Mike Johnson in in Louisiana is saying this is the worst bill ever. It's worse than he could possibly have imagined. Because, well, that's what Donald told him to say. Kirsten Cinema said getting the endorsement was great news. So, um, and then on other news, we got the convoy finally made it to the border and they were underwhelmed. <laughs> so, we can look at that too. But let's do a little view on the border, entertainment purposes only. Um, with the endorsement of uh, the. The Border uh, Union, Border Patrol Agents Union, uh, or I should say the National Border Patrol Council, how does how is that impacting this bill and its passage in the Senate? On Wednesday, they um, on Wednesday they go forward to consider procedural things to basically begin debating this bill. Um, significant part of the reading is the Five of Coins. Um, this is again to me this is immigration. These are immigrants that are trying to get into the United States but can't. And it's winter time. And you know, these people are poor and impoverished and they would like they're they're escaping from the bad situation they're in trying to come into the United States. And it's got the government is wound up in this border uh, this immigration issue. <coughs> Underneath it all is the Ten of Coins. Now, is this about money? Is this about legacy? Is this about DNA and ancestry? Um, honestly, I think for a lot of these uh, these folks trying to come to the United States, it's about trying to set up a better future. They're, they're, they have a much better chance of success in the United States than their home country. Now, the folks that are against uh, this would say, well, they should stay out of, stay out of our country and do it in their own country. Well, for a lot of them, it's not safe to, to do it in their own country. And they would love to do it in their own country. But since we don't live in their country, it's a little bit hard for us to relate because we haven't had a situation like that here. So empathy is missing on uh, folks on the right. But I think it's just basically folks on the border, they want a better living for themselves. Something safe and something where if they work hard and live the American dream, they can live the American dream. In the past, we got the King of Swords. <clears throat> I would almost just yeah, you know, but you got Trump trying to build the wall. There's a, a around the world. There's a big anti-immigrant push. Um, again, you can get into all sorts of conspiracy theories, and one of them being is that a lot of these wars are forcing refugees to migrate and then um, uh, right-wing forces then uh, stir up the local populace to be biased and prejudiced and fearful of these refugees or immigrants that are coming into their country. And it really, it, it helps human trafficking because you got a bunch of people in a jumbled pile and nobody can keep track of anybody. So if some people disappear in the middle of the night, who's going to know? So there's kind of a harshness here about how we've handled immigration and such in the past. Um, current situation is the Page of Swords. It's, you know, um, probably also really hard negotiations going on. And the Republicans got about everything they want in a border security deal. And it's harsh. It is harsh on the immigrants coming over. Current situation of the Page of Swords, now that they've got this border deal that the best, it would be the, 
most changes in like 30 or 40 years. And it's the best deal they could have ever come up with 30 or 40 years. And they couldn't even come up with anything when they held Congress and Trump was the presidency. Now they have to go out and try and sell this thing to, um, to Congress. And they're getting resistance from their own party, even though they're getting everything they want. It's like they've gone from talking tough and taking not taking, you know, uh, not going to take anything but what they offer an answer. They get yes for an answer, and now they don't know what to do with it. Mm. Wheel of Fortune. This could also be that the border border agency is now supporting them. It's going to help. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. You know, got to let this, got to let politics play through. Uh, politicians have free will to make up their mind. They need to posture. Uh, sound tough to their base before they cave in or sound tough to their base and not cave in. You know, got to protect that border, you know. The lesson to be learned is the king of pentacles. Because again, this is Trump. Uh, you know, Trump is telling uh, Mike Johnson what to do and how to do it. And the reason why is because Trump holds all the money. And here's your here's your problem that you've got with the Republican Party right now. Um uh, the uh, the Republican, the RNC, doesn't have money. Trump has <laughs> stolen all of it. Trump has basically out-fundraised the RNC. So all the money's with Trump, and Trump's paying all his legal bills with it. And there's not much money coming in to help the RNC candidates, which then means that Trump has undue influence over Republican uh, House members and such, because they have to run every two years, they need money to get reelected, and Trump has the money. <laughs> Outcome is the Ace of Pentacles. Trump, and here's your money again. Um, <clears throat> there's going to be a big push of money and values here. Um, this could be Trump controlling uh, the money, but I don't think it is. And the reason why I don't think it is, oh, this is also um, a big fund. Uh, this is funding for the border. This is funding for Ukraine. This is funding for Taiwan. This is funding for um, Israel. There's a lot of money in here. Trump holds the money and therefore he can control people. Here's the problem. Trump doesn't pay. He holds on to the money and then when you do what he does, you do what he tells you to, he gives you a thousand dollar check or a five thousand dollar check. It's not worth the money he gives you to hold the country hostage. There's a lot at stake here. And I think um, I do think the Republicans are going to look at the value of this deal and take it because it gives them everything they want. It could also be that the big donors who probably want this as well, um, start pushing Congress people and such to uh, to do it. I'm curious how Mike Johnson's going to react to all this because he says this thing's dead on arrival. And you know, having the Border Union, uh, National Border Patrol Council support it is a big endorsement because now and then they call it a, a good first step. Yeah, short of summarily executing any brown person crossing the southern border. Sure, why not? Just a good first step. And these folks are Christians, so they claim. Um, it's kind of hard for the Republicans to spin it as this is a terrible deal when the Border Patrol Union is saying it's a damn good deal and it's a good, it's a good first step. You know, kind of, kind of really undermines the argument, doesn't it? <laughs> But, you know, the party of law and order, who are they going to believe? Their lying eyes or what Donald Trump tells them through Mega Mike? Okay, Mike Johnson. Now, I've seen this, this funding going through. Um, does this border union, um, border patrol union help uh, convince Mike Johnson to get this through? Or is it, <clears throat> or is it basically money that's going to help Mike Johnson get this thing through? Well, he's got to decide, doesn't he? <laughs> Johnson's on the fence. Now, he's he's saying one thing, but I think he's waiting. 
And one of the things I had seen before also was Johnson tries to hold out for a better deal. I don't know what he's planning on getting. You know, what, $2 billion less for Ukraine to go to the wall, that type of thing? Queen of Cups. Um, you know, I think he's not making up his mind because he wants to see which way the emotional winds are blowing. Right now, Donald Trump is telling him not to take it. But the Border Patrol Union is saying, take the job, take it. Now it's going to be kind of like, what do the polls say? They're going to look at polls and they're going to make their, I'm guessing they're going to make their information based on polls and polling and what, uh, what the Republican base wants. Underneath is the star card. Um, yeah, I think Mike Johnson is kind of curious. He... No, he's in a bad position because if he approves it, then he's going to get voted out by the uh, the Freedom Caucus. If he denies it, then he's going to be persona non grata with um, with the GOP for canceling out the best border deal that they will ever be able to negotiate ever. And I think his star hangs in the balance here as he tries to figure out what he's going to do. In the past, we've got the Six of Coins. Um, he's being given advice by Trump, probably donations by Trump. But here, the thing is, Trump offers big money, but he pays very little. <laughs> so who's, who's going to butter your bread? Who's going to give you the most butter for your bread? There's your money card. Um, current situation is the Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, the, uh, for Mike Johnson, I think this is all about money. This is about money and re-elections and stuff like that. Because he knows that if um, he supports this, you know, somebody's going to try and primary him and he's going to need lots of money to win his primary. More money. <laughs> How do I get more value out of this? How do I get more money? It's, I swear to God, this guy is doing it just for the cash. Money, money, money. I don't think these are values. I don't think Mike Johnson has values. That would be giving him way too much credit. He likes money. The lesson to be learned is the victory, you know, the celebration. Um, and I think, again, he's hanging his star on this. So this depends on, you know, public opinion is going to make the difference in this one. He's going to try and get money out of this. You know, fundraise, do whatnot. But I still I still see this going through. Temperance. Yeah, it's going to go through. Um, it may not be quick. It, it might get pushed back a little bit back and forth. But this is going to go through. I keep seeing it. I don't know how. Again, there could be backroom deals going on. But um, Mike Johnson, again, you've got the budget. This is tied with the budgets. And things along those lines. So the money could be about the budget coming up. And is it better to shut the government down or get all the funding down there? Um, maybe he convinces the Democrats to save him. Maybe not. I'm not sure. But he goes with he goes with whatever will get him the most social media likes. That type of thing. So I think he's going to go with what pub where public opinion takes him. And right now, public opinion is we want funding for Ukraine. We want funding for Israel. We want funding for Taiwan. We want funding. We want our government funded. And people want uh, more control and uh, rules in place at the border. This is just wins all up and down the chute. And the only group that doesn't want this is the Putin and Trump-led far-right extremists in the House. I'm sure there are some uh, progressives that hate this deal, and I don't blame them. But um, the, right now, this is kind of what has to happen. You know, step backward before we can take a step forward type of thing. Or maybe two steps backwards. Ah. I don't know enough about the situation of the border. I look at it as a humanitarian crisis, and this will help the humanitarian crisis. I would have loved to have seen some things for Dreamers and stuff like that. But again, maybe the next Congress can uh, 
cut out a deal to get 60 votes to get this through. I thought it was a simple majority. It turns out you need 60 votes to get this through. So might be a couple of Congresses. All right. Um, lastly, <laughs> the Freedom Convoy. Some folks drove like a thousand miles down to uh, down to Texas, and <laughs> they got they were supposed to go to some like Eagle Point Park or something like that to see the invasion go through. Instead, they got sent to some kid's ranch <laughs> where they got to see Ted Nugent play the guitar and Sarah Palin get to spout nonsense at them. Uh, and when they went to the border, there was no mass invasion there, causing some of them to be really confused because you know, they were told that there was this mass invasion. And, you know, <laughs> I was trying to think of a good analogy. This is not a great analogy, but it's like your buddy's telling you about this great fishing spot, the you know, the salmon are so thick you could walk across their backs across the river and never touch the water type of thing. And you get there and you see like at dawn, just when the fish are jumping, they're going after the uh, the insects on the surface of the water. And you see like two jump. It's like, yeah, I saw some fish jumping. I saw like two of them. But this is not like the, the most awesome fishing spot ever type thing. Maybe, you know, they might have been lying to us. Why would they tell us that in... You know, maybe we came on a bad day. Maybe they just spent a couple extra days there fighting with each other. Uh, and apparently they all are getting each other's grills too because we have a bunch of angry people and they don't have a bunch of brown people to be angry at. Well, there's just other people around you to be angry at. Drunken hillbilly brawl. Come on, 501s. Don't fail me now. <laughs> If that card comes up, expect the cackles to go to 12. What's the energy around this freedom convoy that went down to the southern border and saw nothing? Do they realize they've been duped? Five of coins. There's that immigration again. Yep. Here's the big swarm of people coming through. All those immigrants. You know, this is also them kind of being led astray. Crossed with the Queen of Pentacles. Um... And underneath is the Page of Swords. <clears throat> Man, we're going right back to that last reading about the, the immigration bill and all the immigrants coming across, or the lack of immigrants in this case, coming across here. Um, you know, I think they were there going to support the Border Patrol agents. And, <clears throat> and they heard about all the horrible things going on at the border, and they were there to lend their moral and maybe financial support. And when they get there, it's underwhelming. There's no there there. And they might start looking at their values. Not that, and when I say looking at their values, I don't mean like they're going to rethink their lives and say, oh, I've been a horrible person for being so biased against brown people. No, it's going to be like, they're looking at it like, y'all said that there was a big problem here. And we're not seeing it. You know, it's kind of that first baby step towards realizing you've been lied to, conned, duped, grifted on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm sure some of them will make up all sorts of excuses as to what happened or didn't happen, but they'll need to be told first by their favorite news sources. God, these cards are looking familiar, huh? So, two of pentacles. In the past, they believe everything they've been told. And they've given their money to help protect the border because, you know, illegals are coming in. You know, their family came in with the, uh, <laughs> on the Mayflower. So they're, they belong here. You know, never mind the irony that once upon a time, <laughs> um, the original settlers of the United States were also illegal immigrants coming in. But, you know, we'll leave that to the side. A lot of money, a lot of value being uh, perpetuated into this, into this myth. This mythology here. Oh, these cards are so familiar. Current situation is the six of coins. They're starting to realize that maybe, just maybe, there was some exaggeration going on. Big, big invasion and little, little itty bitty invasion here. You know, look at all these coins in here. More money. God, if they ever discover that this is just one big grift, oh, expect the cups. And the swords cards to come a flying out. Overarching energy is the ten of wands. 
Um, first off, I think they're exhausted, emotionally exhausted, because you're always under threat. You know, the brown people coming across the border to steal your jobs. They're going to take away your living. you got to give us money so we can protect the border. And then they get to the border and there ain't no, <laughs> there's no, there's no catastrophe there. Do they think that, oh, we, all the money we gave them, that fixed the border. We can go home now. But the thing is, what's in the news cycle right now? Stuff to help fix the border. And the Republicans saying, no, it's no good because the border's out of control. But these folks drove down there and saw it's not out of control. They're having a hard time reconciling the two things because they haven't discovered Occam's razor of the simplest answer is the most likely answer. They need to change one of their core uh, assumptions. And one of the core assumptions is Fox News and Republicans uh, the Freedom, the Freedom Caucus are being truthful. The minute they toss that out, then things sort of settle in. It's like, well, they're not being truthful. Why? <laughs> well, try money, for instance. Say that they want to fundraise off of you and they do it by scaring you and telling you about the border. Does that fit? Yes. That's how you get them there, eventually. <sighs> Lesson to be learned is the Two of Cups. Um, I don't think they're ready to give up on right-wing media just yet. I mean, they got to see, meet Ted Nugent. They got to meet uh, Sarah Palin. I'm just curious what they're going to tell their friends and family when they get home. I mean, obviously, they can call and FaceTime and do all that stuff. Um but there might be a little bit of difficulty reconciling what's going on with what they saw. Just maybe. Maybe some cracks in the, the facade there. Outcome three of wands. You know, to be honest, I think they might think twice before they drive a thousand miles to go looking for brown people that aren't there. Maybe if the GOP... <laughs> sold this as an international game of hide-and-seek, and the immigrants coming over that day are the hide-and-seek champions, so they're a little harder to spot. Um, I don't think they're there yet. Again, this is this only had like, this convoy had like 19 vehicles, so you can expect about 50 to 75 people were probably part of this. So it's not a huge number, but... You know, sometimes fires start with the smallest of sparks. Is this going to fan into a, a big fire? Doesn't appear so. But, you know, if you can get one or two of them to just sort of like, you know, that was a waste of my time. I took a week off from work to do this, or I spent a week of my life doing this, and then I got in a fight with some guy. I didn't get my drunken hillbilly brawl card. I'm a little upset. You know, maybe they might want to rethink their life choices. I think I'm giving them too much credit. Oh, well. Anyways, we'll end it here. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. Thank you for your likes and your shares and your comments and everything you do to feed the algorithm so that my video makes it out to a wider audience. Two people just discovered this channel recently. Welcome. I'm glad you found us. I hope you found this reading insightful, and I'll catch you on the next video. Take care.